Hey, welcome to the Woods fans. In this video, we're going to go into detail about what I did to the front entrance of this lake house. Now, as you know, in the past, I've been painting and fixing up, but this video is going to detail exactly what I did on the front step and the front entrance. First, I took down the shutters that were on the sides of each of the windows. Next, I demolished this big bulky railing on the front of the house. Since the front step isn't very tall, I figured I didn't really need a railing, just a platform would do. This railing was very visually heavy and with it gone, it just opened up the whole design. Then I just cut off the 4x4 posts that were sticking up out of the bottom framing off flush with the rest of the joists using an oscillating multi-tool. Where the railing was left some areas that needed to really be patched on the side of the house. So I filled all the blemishes with wood putty. I sanded everything. I also caulked a ton of seams along the front of the house. And in preparation to paint everything, I also pressure washed. Now I came in with primer and I painted. I don't want to move too quickly through this because it sure was a lot of work, but my previous videos detail all about this. You can watch my video, How to Paint Exterior Siding, and it will go into more detail. So this is where I left you off. The house is looking pretty monotone. The trim color is Peppery by Bear Paint, and the siding color is Smoky Trout by Bear Paint. And I wanted the front entrance to really pop and give an accent color that was going to bring this home to life. I decided to get a new door slab for the front entrance because the door that was there had warping on the window and it was letting in some leaky air. The new door slab I got was actually on clearance for only 19 bucks. It's an insulated steel 36 inch door, but it had a dent in it that made it be discounted. I don't mind because I'm going to be able to patch that in the future, but all I had to do was mark and recess the hinges. So I did that by uh, using a chisel and I, once I got the hinge recess, I also marked holes for the door handle. Now these are standard, so I had to be really careful um, marking them appropriately and drilling without a jig. I just lined up the previous door right on top of my new door slab and then used my hole saw to drill right through. Unfortunately, my hole saw could not take drilling into steel. So you can see here, this is what the teeth on my hole saw should look like. And this is what they look like after me trying to drill my two and an eighth inch size hole for the doorknob. So instead, I just used this hole saw as a marker and then I came in and cut the steel door with a metal cutting blade on my jigsaw. The jigsaw blade did not make it through the thickness of the whole door slab, which is probably good because it allows for a bit of a cleaner cut. So once I had one side cut, I flipped the door slab over and I used the hole that I had drilled for with my hole saw to line up on the other side exactly where that was going to be, marked it again, and then did the same process with my jigsaw to finally get the holes cut for my doorknob and deadbolt. Now I'm going to use a spade bit to drill through to make the one inch holes for where the latch and the lock come through. With all my holes drilled, it's ready to mount my new door slab. Mounting a door is no joke. Trying to fit a rectangle into an existing rectangular door jam is a lot harder than it sounds. I did have to do quite a bit of modification on the hinges, just kind of adding some cardboard here and there until it fit nice and snug. But I was able to get this mounted into place and then I went forth painting it. The color I chose was Spiced Berry by Bear Paint. Next, I installed beautiful new hard wear from Amazon and I couldn't believe how affordable this set is. It's linked in the description if you're looking to upgrade your door hardware. And next I'm going to take off the storm door. I know storm doors are very practical but I feel like they aren't very visually appealing or welcoming on the front of a house so I decided to take mine off. You'll notice in this clip that now there are two junction boxes for light fixtures. That's because before I had the house painted, I called my electrician to run new wire through the soffit and actually split the light. So there was only one light there and we pulled another one to make the front entrance symmetrical and flank the door with two lights. The lights I got are a lantern style and they're done in a powder coated black finish. I think they are so, 
so pretty they came in a pack of four from overstock and those are also linked in the description installing the new lights was really easy and once that was done i was excited to get the brick mold and the trim around the door painted the same as the trim on the rest of the house it's the color peppery and i love this gray up next to the spiced berry red i think it looks beautiful together my color scheme and my vision is all coming to life there's only one major thing left to do and that is the front step that brings me to the sponsor of this video, which is Armadillo Decking. I have worked with Armadillo Decking from Avon Plastics in numerous other videos with their campfire colored composite decking. And this is made from recycled plastic material. And it is so, so amazing, very low maintenance product, extremely durable and easy to install. So I pre-cut all of these pieces and then I came and tried to remove the rotted decking that was there. So many of the screws were rotted through that I could not get them pulled up. Probably only half of them came out. So then I came at the deck boards with a reciprocating saw, but that also was not working too great except for on the ends. So eventually I ended up just prying them up. This was quite the workout. I just pried them up and ripped off the screws. And then I tried to get the joist system, the framing of the step as clean as I could before putting on new decking. Some of it was a little bit rotten, especially in the areas between the deck boards. So what I'm gonna do to prevent any further damage is apply these joist covers. These are also made by Armadillo Decking and they're a great invention. They're plastic that just pops right over your two by six, two by four, whatever your um, framing's made of and it protects the top from like leaves and debris and water that sits between your decking and causes it to rot. You can easily cut the joist covers with a utility knife and then that plastic is so easy to install. So once where these were all on my joist, I felt a lot better about going over it with the composite decking, knowing this is all gonna hold up for a lot longer. The composite decking, I started just with one main board at the house, thinking if I laid it opposite of the previous decking, then none of my screws would line up with where that rot was in the framing below. Um, in other words, I was staggering where the seam was. But what I didn't realize is that the width of my composite decking was not the same as the width of the decking I pulled off. They're about a quarter inch different. So at the end, once I had laid all this decking, I ended up with a strip left over that was only like an inch wide, which wasn't gonna work. Um, the previous decking had like a four inch strip at the end. So my measurements didn't work out and I didn't get it right the first time, but that's okay. It was easy for me to pull all these up and I just started over with a piece cut in half. So the first row and the last row are gonna be three inches wide and they're going to get glued on one end. I'm just going to use some construction adhesive and then the turbo clip on the other side. Now a turbo clip is how you connect this decking together. The composite decking has grooves on the edges and the turbo clips are so great because they just have a little lip that goes into the groove. You screw it down into the, your joist and then the lip on the other side of the clip goes into the next decking board and the spacer on the turbo clip gives you exactly the same spacing between each board so you don't have to do any measuring you just line it up screw it in and push the next board against it to cover the edges of my boards and the side of my framing i use this fascia screw and the fascia boards that matched with this campfire finish and these are about 11 and a half inches tall so they fit perfectly on the sides of this step and I line that up to cover up everything, all the edges that were kind of unsightly. This screwed into place and it finished it off beautifully. I love the new step. I know in my video about painting the house, I asked you guys if I should paint the chimney. And a lot of you said yes, but ultimately I decided no because I didn't want the maintenance of painted brick and I didn't want to compromise um, the integrity of it either. So instead I just went up and I painted the flashing around it, which was brown that matched the old trim. I painted it with the peppery color that matches my new trim color. And I think this already makes it look a lot better. Plus when you see it with the front door color, 
color and the decking color. I think the chimney looks so great. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you think I made the right decision there. The front entrance of this house was so fun to renovate. I feel like it was the last crucial step in getting the exterior makeover finished to my liking. The pop of red on the front door is perfect with my new color scheme and I think that the whole look is very charming. I can't believe I took this house that was yellow and brown, outdated and clunky, and turned it into this sleek and charming, more modern version of a cottage house. I can't wait to continue work on the inside. The more I beautify this lake house, the more I see its potential. So be sure to stick with me and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Welcome to the woods. I'll be publishing lots more videos renovating this charming little property. Next up is the living room. So stay tuned and thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you again next time.